there you are. Yes, yeah, so I finally finished my solar backup project. It's off grid and uh, I thought I'd invite you over to check it out. So on top of my 20 by 12, I believe, workshop shed, and uh, I've got six 310 watt solar panels, which uh, at maximum capacity, given the um, losses, of course, you get pretty close to 250 watts each. This is actually a hybrid system. Uh, seemed kind of sad to just have it sitting there doing nothing all the time that it was in backup so uh, in order to make use of all the energy created every day uh, i've got two inverters the one here on the left is a uh, grid tied 2000 watt inverter and that the uh, power from the dc power from the solar panels comes in here goes through a two pole breaker and then down to a two-way switch. Uh, in this position, where it is right now, uh, it's running the power in and then over to the grid tied inverter. You can see here that it's uh, outputting 1351 watts of uh, AC power, 220 volts, 240 actually that is, and that just goes straight out of this European style plug. Um, I ended up with that because this inverter just was not available thanks to the supply chain uh, problems. So the only one that was available was a European plug version, which is really the same thing. There's no difference in the unit itself. Uh, came with this plug here that goes with the European outlet. And I figured that'd be a good idea just to keep that uh, because the 240 40 volt outlet is uh, not something you want to plug your regular tools and equipment into so this way I can't accidentally do that or nobody else can so it actually goes uh, through there and then up into the breaker box and into the house and the grid and everything so during the day um, high I'm getting about 1500 watts which is the 250 of each panel uh, so it's that's pretty pretty good I would say uh, that adds to my uh, existing uh, on grid tied system which is about five kilowatts so i'm getting about six and a half kilowatts total so that's the grid tied portion if there's ever a power outage a uh, long-term power outage then um, the other inverter here comes into play i've already turned off the uh, power to the house which is also the power to the workshop and we're going to simulate the power outage so uh, first thing we're going to do is switch this over to the off-grid inverter the grow watt and let's see where that comes down goes here directly into the bottom of the inverter you can see it powering up right here batteries are at 53.4 volts which according to the chart here for 48 volts for batteries is 95 percent that's pretty good my next step is to turn the inverter on it takes a little bit of time to come on so now you can see we got an output of 240 volts and all we have to do is turn on the breakers underneath. Let's see, this is the AC output. We'll turn that on. And then over on the breaker box, I've got a lockout thing here to prevent that actually being accidentally being turned on. So we turn that off, or take that off, that is, and flip it on. Now we are feeding power directly into the house. You can hear the inverter come on and you can see the lights are on here in the workshop. So solar power coming in is stored down in these lithium, what are they, lithium iron phosphate batteries. I've got four of them at 12 volts each so it's a 48 volt pack. 
and uh, each one is 100 amp hours. And at 48 volts, that comes up to 4.8 kilowatts of storage. The initial power on sequence for the inverter is finished and it's quieted down now. We can come in here and take a look at the usage. Let's see if I can remember how. Uh, we're going to come down here. We can see. Darn. Let me close this. There we go. Now we can see better. Maybe. It's actually worse, isn't it? There we go. So, uh, the whole house, including these lights out here, are using about 500 watts of power. So it's really nothing. We've got way more power coming in, about 1300 watts than we're using. So any that's not used is stored in the batteries. To go along with that, I've got a USB cable, which allows me to hook it to a laptop and uh, monitor power usage and battery capacity and all of that kind of good stuff and I've also got a cable here this cable pardon the mess um, lets me connect to this power inlet right here this is a 240 volt uh, only got it set for 20 amp power power inlet so I can plug this in here and also plug the other one in over there. And this would be useful in a situation where the grid is up and down a lot and um, maybe the sun's not shining so you can get a chance to charge uh, while the grid's up and you can use it when the grid's not. So that's pretty good. And also I can plug my generator into here and uh, also supplement the power if you've got not much sun shining and a long term outage and uh, I can charge the batteries with the generator. And next to that is a separate charge controller which allows me to hook up additional solar panels. I can, if necessary, say the grid's going to be down really long term, I can take some of my grid type solar panels, set them up against the side of the workshop and plug them in here and that will supplement the power going in so I can have really way more than I need. So that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed the tour and maybe you want to set something up for yourself. It's not difficult. I think the whole thing cost maybe, oh now I can't even remember, but about $4,000 and you get a 20, what is it, like a 16%, 18%, I don't know, some kind of percent rebate uh, on, your, on your taxes, so uh, it kind of pays for a little bit of it. And, uh, in that case, you're you're all ready for long-term power outage, short-term, or just generating extra grid-type power. So, there you go.